Say hello to my subscribers right there. Hey, we we put in a company we what we put in that guy right there is the best mechanic there. No, but yeah, yeah but, and now he's an influencer in YouTube. No, no. <laughs> Serious. That's one of the best mechanics there. D &D. Wait that Holds law. Codeology. Sparkle Cuz. I'm here to enforce Holmes Law. Come be great, man. Okay, what's up guys? How you doing? This is Mel. Welcome to Holmes Law. Today we're going to be going over wire terminations for beginners and for those who have never really worked with large wires as far as terminating them, okay? And I just want to make a little statement. This in no way is the only way to wire um, equipment, okay? I just want to make that you know a uh, statement okay so i don't want you guys just to you know you know chop my head off this in no way is the only way okay this is the way that i do it and you can actually you know get whatever you can from this video any ideas or whatever it is that you know you gather from this actual video i hope it helps you know any of the beginners and you know giving them a creative idea on how to actually terminate you know these wires and you know just giving them a little insight you know and uh before they actually ever do it you know for those that that have never done it or even maybe those that have already you know terminated big large wires like 750 600s 500s whatever the case may be maybe this will give them another idea on how to actually terminate them and make their work come out a little better okay uh so let's start it off we're gonna start off this is gonna be uh you know some video clips and um i'm just gonna actually do a voiceover and i'll walk you through the whole uh situation and um yeah i'll give you some pointers and tips and let you know what i actually worked with and uh what i was doing here okay so let's start it off and basically these are just the wires that you just saw there i'm actually organizing them and as you can see you know i just separate my wires i lift them up off the floor so that i get more actual room to actually work in there now as you can see it's it's you know it's not that tight but um it is a little bit you know um with all those wires blocking my way in there well there was no way i was gonna get in there and they're very heavy and i wasn't gonna be able to muscle my way through them i had to lift them up off the floor so that's an another little key you know get organized and plan on how you're gonna actually you know execute your job you know just take the time out to plan it and to actually prepare yourself you know the prep work is key you know that's what's going to actually help you in actually you know being successful in c completing your, your task okay and as you see i'm i'm getting started you know i'm opening up all my lugs it's just one thing that you know helps me and you know and um, i don't have to waste time you know opening a lug after i'm done stripping the wire and actually having to put it in they're all open i don't have to worry about it anymore so i take the time out to open all my lugs you know this way i'm using one tool at a time you know um i don't have to use so i already have to use you know multiple tools you know i gotta strip it i have to use the wire cutters and uh, whatever the case may be so i try to use as many tools as i can you know once at a time if i have to use my wrench i try to use it you know the wrench to open up all the screws at once <clears throat> okay so with that said as you can see I'm actually setting myself up, you know, I had two different size lugs, one was a 3 8 Allen key, the other one was a half inch, okay, so I actually lifted up my wires, and I don't know if you can see on the back side over here, I have all my blues and my whites, I, I sent them to the back, and I have my reds and the blacks in the front, because those are the ones I'm going to land first, you know, <clears throat> And as you can see, I lifted up all the wires, you know, I got them out of my way and I started to land the, the blacks and the reds. Those were on the left side of the actual disconnect. So I landed those first. And just another point I want to give you is, you know, even though you separated them and you know what you're going to be landing first, you always want to keep in mind and pay attention to the orientation of your wires and pay attention to if you're going to be crossing them or not, because you can actually block yourself <clears throat> or bury 
a wire as you're actually landing them you know so you want to make sure that if you have to move any wires out the way as you're landing you know whatever wires you're landing you want to do that before you actually terminate them you know so just to keep a, you know give you a you know a little word of advice just you know pay attention to the wires that aren't actually landed as you're terminating the ones that you are because you might end up burying them or you might end up crossing them and you could end up with something <clears throat> you know after doing a good job you might end up with the last few wires you know messing up the whole the whole job because you have to cross you know over all of your nice work because you weren't paying attention to that you know and here i want to make a big statement here and i want to actually make it you know it's very important you're going to see me using a pvc cutter okay and this is the way that i do it okay and um you know by no means i'm always careful okay i'm always careful when i'm using that and i want to actually say it is a good way to you know to strip the wires because those insulations are very thick but i want to make a statement and i want you to know that you have to be very careful when you're using those pvc cutters and at no way put a lot of pressure on them because they're really sharp mines are old mines are like five years old and they're still sharp okay <clears throat> so with that said you, if you do use those pvc cutters to actually cut the insulation off okay you do not want to put a lot of pressure on that okay because it will score your wire and especially if you're working with aluminum it could cut very deep into that aluminum and you don't want that okay so again i'm gonna say it if you use pvc cutters or anything actually it's just when you're cutting the insulation period you want to be careful to not score the wires okay anyways to keep it moving I'm landing my B phase here and it, it like if you can't really see it but the the way that the pipes are set up is you have one set of you have 11 sets and you have six in the back and five in the front okay and they're all going you know perpendicular to what the way the the um the lugs are okay so what I ended up doing was I landed the back row first okay of the A phase and I brought those in first and I organized those and then I landed the back row of the B phase okay and I made sure the whole time that I'm keeping the C phase and the neutral out of the way but at the same time I'm not crossing them okay so that I don't have you know it doesn't mess up my whole job <clears throat> okay so like I said you want it's, it's kind of like you know chess or checkers you know you just as you're making your moves and you're landing your you know your 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 wires you want to make sure that you're paying attention to the other players too you know making sure you're paying attention to the the other wires okay just so that you don't cross them and, and mess them up you know in the long run okay and yeah you know also i'm using the uh green lee wire bender here the hydraulic one it gives me some nice clean bends you know and i'm using it but at the same time i didn't want to go overboard and you know make some really you know square bends and all that you know i didn't want it for that i just wanted it to make some nice clean bends and um <clears throat> basically just to give me the you know a straight wire coming down into the lug this way there wasn't no actual pressure on the lugs you know pulling it at all this way when the wire comes down it's just a straight piece of wire coming down into the lug it's not getting pulled at all okay and um that's just what i went for i, I didn't have to use it by no means do you have to use an actual wire bender you can do it without it you know you could just bend it with your hands or you can get a piece of pipe put a little tape on it for the installation and, and bend it with that by no means do you have to use a wire bender this is actually one of the first times i've ever used a wire bender uh we've had it on this job so i said you know what i figured why not <clears throat> and as you see here i have the uh blues and the whites and this is the blues and the whites from the back row okay and i'm landing those and as you can see here at first i wanted to you know i was thinking about it i wanted to land them you know in the front of the lugs this way the the other 
the front row of the blues and the whites can go in the back. But then I changed my mind, you know, because I was thinking about it and it didn't make sense to me. So I put them in the in the back. Okay. So that's just what I mean about paying attention and just as you go, you know, see what works, see what's going to look better, you know, come up with a plan and, you know, before you even start, come up with the end result, you know, have it in your head how you want it to look, you know, and by no means does it mean that it's going to end up that way, you know, things do change as you go, okay, and um, just want to actually make that point there, you know, so... Yeah, I'm using this wire bender. It ended up being, you know, real handy, especially because, um, you know, um, it was a little tight back there, and, and you know, being on the ladder and all that, I didn't get enough leverage to actually bend it, you know. But um, it worked out. So yeah, so you know, as you said, I'm landing them. I'm actually stripping it out. I'm measuring it. I make sure that I, I cut off enough insulation. I don't want to have too much insulation cut off. So I measure the actual lug so that I cut off just enough, you know. I don't want my insulation touching the lug, but I also don't want there to be, you know, a whole lot of insulation, you know, cut off either. I don't want to have so much conductor showing. So I just want to have a just enough. You know, if, if it was up to me, I would say maybe a quarter of an inch, you know, of conductor showing off of the, uh, the lug. Uh, that's pretty much what I, you know what I actually uh do I'm not sure if there's uh you know actually uh you know some kind of regulation on that or not but I don't think so I just try to show a little bit of conductor and that's it as long as my insulation is not touching my conductor uh as, as long as my insulation is not touching the lug I mean it's I think it's perfectly fine and um also don't forget to torque <clears throat> on this equipment it didn't have the uh torque specs so what i ended up doing was i looked at the lug and it was in uh it was a burn die lug so i looked at the model number and i looked at the torque spec and that's what i went with you know i went with 46 uh foot pounds and that's what pretty much i went with that's what i usually do i look at the equipment first if it doesn't have it then i look at the the terminal if i can't find it there then i'll go to the actual code and it'll give me the torque spec for the wire size or whatever the case may be and then i'll use that okay sometimes if i even have to go to the website or call i'll even do that just to get the actual you know accurate torque specification you know because uh torquing really is important especially you know um you know the service and um you know panels and all that you know you want to actually you know torque it down and um yeah so basically that is what I was doing here. I just wanted to give you, you know, basically a little insight on this. You know, this uh, video was recommended, so I was, I had the opportunity of recording it. I do apologize for the actual, you know, video quality. I know it's not great. You know, it's a construction site. You know, I couldn't really record it that, you know, well. I was working at the same time, so it's not like I get to like, <clears throat> you know, record it professionally or whatever. But um, I did try my best. But um, with that said, I just wanted to give you an insight on how to actually terminate this and, and go about tackling this task for beginners and for somebody that hasn't really worked with this size of disconnect or this size of equipment or, or wires. You know, this is just something that you could actually fall back on, take a look at and just plan it out and have this help you come up with your own ideas and your own creativity okay on how you want to do this by no means is there any you know wrong or right way you know whatever you feel is going to look good for you that's what you do so long as you actually don't you know make it look horrible and and you and you actually just you know make it look decent and the most important things are you know you you torque it down you don't keep you don't actually have them too short you know and um i know people that actually like to have a lot of extra wire too as well <clears throat> uh to me uh, sometimes that can look a little you know a little cluttered in these uh spaces you know but um i mean having a little extra wire just in case it doesn't hurt either i guess you know you always want to have a little extra if you can um so yeah but here I go, and I'm actually 
you know, sizing it up. That's the actual steps that I'm doing. I, I take it. I figure out what size, you know, I need the bend that I want. I take it, you know, even if I have to cut it two or three times just so that you're sure of the measurement that you need, you know, and then actually, you know, this way measure two or three times, whatever the case may be. I'm actually cutting it at least twice before I actually strip it here. Once just to get it inside the actual disconnect so that I can measure it out towards the lug and then again I get my accurate measurement against the lug then I measure how much I need to strip for the lug and finally finished service you know? D we still got uh three other services to go this is the first one and so uh yeah this is just a That's little it. recording that I had this is the end result of it here. Second service done. Next is the third one. Second yeah, done. So this is the end result. So the next service is going to be service A.